Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast is a Christ-centered podcast. Established in 2019 and hosted weekly by Pastor Chris Busher. Addressing a host of topics such as the Great Commission, Christian discipleship, and often featuring interviews with special guests who are experts in their field. The views and events expressed on this podcast and all related materials belong solely to their author and not necessarily to the author's employer, organization, committee, or other group or individual. While all attempts are made to present accurate information, some information may become outdated over time. Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast makes every attempt to timely update any and all such information. Without further delay, here's another powerful episode of Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. Welcome back to another episode of Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. Once again, my name is Dallas here. Today, we have another incredible guest joining us from Canada, Bishop Lindley Newland. It's such a pleasure to have you here today. How are you? I am doing great, and uh, it's a great honor. For me to be on your podcast and uh, I value this as an excellent opportunity. The Bible said that your gifts make room for you. So mm. I take it that this is part of that journey. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Today we're going to be discussing your book, The Spirit of Individualism, a new word for these challenging times. And I think that this is such a, re- a relevant word today because we live in a society of individualism. No matter where you are in the world, I believe that this is something that we are focusing on. How can I be better? What can I get? What can I do? And it's all based on our individualism. And so thank you so much for being here today and sharing a little bit about this topic. And so before we get going into those questions, I would like to just give you the opportunity. Tell us a little bit about who you are, your faith journey, and then we'll go from there. Thank you so much, Dallas. And um my name is Lendley Newland. Uh, Bishop is my title, chaplain. I, have, I wear several hats, but um, my birth name is Lendley Newland. I was born in Jamaica in a little rural community wow. known as Duanvale in the parish of Trelawney, Jamaica. I grew up in that community until I left there as a young man, but I grew up in the Sunday school. My deceased grandmother raised me and uh, she did a fantastic job. She's now in heaven, I believe. And um, I went to Sunday school, not because it was my choice, but back in those days, whether your parents or guardians were Christian, you have to go to Sunday school on Sunday mornings. Really? And looking back cultural... on that, I thank my grandmother so much wow. for making sure that every Sunday morning I had to be in Sunday school. And those in the Caribbean and especially Jamaica, which is my the country of my birth, we used to wear short trousers now it's a style but then we wear that to school and then to church but growing up in that climate helps me today and looking back I wish my grandmother were here for me to keep honoring her Mm. for making sure that I grew up in Sunday school And then in 1973, shortly after I finished primary school, I surrender my heart to the Lord on a Sunday morning in the Duanvale New Testament Church of God. And uh, this year is almost 50 years. Yes, time really flies. But thank God for that humble beginning. And where I am today, whatever I have become and will become, I yeah. can't forget my genesis, you know, which is where I were brought up, how I were brought up. And thanks be to God, that has helped me. Yeah. I think that's great that you said in the culture of Jamaica, in the Caribbean, yes. the kids go to the Sunday school. 
I think that's incredible. Yes. We should have this in the States. We should have this in Canada. We should have this, you know, this should be a thing. Why isn't this a thing? Well, I think part of it as a parent, I have some beautiful daughters as a parent. I think it's, it starts in the erosion of parenting, uh, where in my days, as I said earlier, I didn't have a choice and the other young people or children of my generation didn't have a choice whether we go to a Sunday school or not. We have to make sure that we sweep up the yard, carry water those days and do all the chores in the home because Sunday morning, you got to go to Sunday school. These days that we are now living in has dramatically changed in the fact that parents no longer see to it that their children go to Sunday school. Mm -hmm. And most of the pop stars and top artists that you know and heard about in the United States and in, America, in Jamaica, they have their beginning singing in youth choir, going to Sunday school. And so we should train up the child in the way yeah. they should go. Mm -hmm. And when they become whole, they will not depart from it because yeah. those seeds have been sown. And have you seen this with your generation as well? That the people who, your generation that went to Sunday school, that affected their childhood, their, their adulthood as well? Have you, you seen that? Yes. Yeah. One's yeah, upbringing cool. have a lot to do with your life going forward. Mm. And um, today, children are loose all over the place. Parents yeah. don't know where they are. They come in any time of the night. They are out of control. And so the schools can't do it all. Mm -hmm. The church can't do it all. Parents have a responsibility to make sure that they grow their children in love, but with discipline. Because the future generation, I am bothered. I'm a granddad. I have one grandson. And I'm bothered about the generation of my grandson. Because, thank goodness, his mother, which is my daughter, followed the pattern to which I grew them up. But we have to put a lot of the responsibility at the foot of parents for not sending their children to Sunday school of whatever denomination they choose. Wow. A call to parents. Thank you. I was not expecting this. This is the Lord is leading us in this direction. So thank you so much for sharing these things. You're listening to the Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. We'll be right back after this quick word from our sponsors. A Great Work by Sidney Andre is a story of faith, hope, and perseverance. Growing up in Angola, Africa, Andre writes to encourage all of us whose dreams and hopes seem to be gone, but to be of good cheer and keep believing that all things work together for our good. For those who are waiting on a miracle, this story will inspire you to rest in the depth of God's promises and believe that your story does not have to end the same way that it started. Find your copy of A Great Work on Amazon today or by searching www.agreatworkfoundation.com. After his father's death and the remarriage of his mother to an abusive, manipulative man, Scott Maynard dealt with his pain through alcohol, delinquent behavior, and excessive partying. Though Scott lost touch with the spiritual side for many years, it never left him completely. His faith would eventually return, helping to carry him through a broken marriage, single fatherhood, an unimaginable injury, and finally, miraculous healing. Find your copy of A Test of Faith on Amazon today. And let's discuss your book a little bit more, The Spirit of Individualism. So I just want to ask you, uh, right off the bat, is this a spirit that you're discussing or is it just a lifestyle of individualism? Do you really mean the word spirit when you, when you write that? Yes, I mean the word spirit because human behavior is influenced by spirits. Mm. 
it's either by the spirit of God or the spirit of Satan. Yes, there is no, I, I'm, I'm with you on that. I there's no agree. middle way about it. Mm -hmm. And so what is happening in our world today, in our communities across the globe, not just mm -hmm. in a few countries, are spirits. Human behavior is a spirit. And so writing this book was out of inspiration. The Lord God inspired me. It wasn't a thesis I was writing for a degree program or such. But God inspired me to write the book because of a situation that I, that I saw, which, you know, I will respond to in a little later. But yes, it's a spirit. What is happening wherever they are happening? Human spirit, human attitude, human behavior. They are spirits. Yeah, yeah. And if you could give us, before we start into these questions here, where in the Bible do we see this example of a spirit of individualism? Or there, is there someone in the Bible who experienced this and, and struggled with it? Well, the, the, the title um, is not directly recorded in the Bible, but mm -hmm. there are human behaviors. In fact, the book written off the background of Genesis chapter 4 in the story of Cain and Abel. Mm -hmm. And so from, because remember, Adam were not born, he was created. Yeah. Neither was Eve born from, for the Bible said that God took a rib from the man, Adam, mm -hmm. and we have a woman. And so God performed the first marriage ceremony in human history. <laughs> and, and then Cain and Abel, they were born and they're following siblings. And in the story in Genesis chapter 4, where, as everybody listening know, Cain killed his brother Abel. And the backdrop to that was that Cain carried out that because of his individualistic grudge for his brother. In the sacrifice that was made, God said that Abel offered a better sacrifice than Cain. Mm -hmm. As a result of that, that's where we have the beginning of human jealousy until this day. Wow. wow. I love that you started Cain, there in Genesis. Yes. You could have started Cain with Louis Judas Abel. Iscariot. You could have started with King Saul, but you went all the way back to the beginning. Yes. Genesis. All that's the awesome. way back to the beginning. Wow. Because that's the inspiration God gave me. And when you read through the book of Genesis and that story, human beings, you and I and everybody listening to this podcast, were created by God, the creator, to offer sacrifice mm -hmm. to him. And so it began with Cain and Abel. And then as a result of that, as I said, jealousy, grudge, and as Jamaicans would say, some of your listeners may not be familiar with this, but Jamaicans would say that people become bad mind <laughs> against one another. Mm -hmm. And so when God called for Cain in verse 8 and 9 and asked him, where is your brother? He responded mm -hmm. with a selfish individualism attitude. Am I my brother's keeper? Yeah. And since then, that spirit is manifesting until this very day we are on this podcast. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that 
I have so many questions about where the spirit came from, but we'll, we'll talk about that another day. Yeah. <laughs> That's another yeah. question, right? That's another but, question for another time. A little bit deeper into the book. So this, you said it started from the beginning, right? But how mm -hmm. does this in, impact our society today, our churches, communities, workplaces, and different areas of our current life today? Right. Um, well, this impact our lives because human, the church is not a building. The church is people. And it doesn't matter what background you come from. It doesn't matter what the color of our skin is. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether we speak English or we can't. The church is people, mm -hmm. not building. Building is where the church meet, is the meeting place where the church worship. And so the church is made up of human beings, men and women like yourself and I and others make up the church. And be, long before the foundation of the world, God planned his church. It's not an afterthought. <laughs> you know, it, that's why Jesus Christ came and died for our sins. So the church is made up of people. And there is no perfect church anywhere on planet Earth. The man or the woman who believe that, you know, they are living delusion. Mm -hmm. Because there is not a perfect man or woman. I am not perfect. You are not perfect. Our audiences are not perfect. We are all a work in progress. And so... The spirit manifests in the church in various ways. And we need to understand that they comes to us by human behavior. And so as you, as you ask the question, individualism is prevalent in the church. And if you notice, mm -hmm. I wrote that it's a no word you know, for these challenging times. It's not uh, a thing of the past. Mm -hmm. On this very day, there is the spirit of individualism at work somewhere within the body of Christ. I did not prepare you for this question, but it's on my heart. I got to I got to ask, what is the difference between humanism and individualism? Okay, right. That's a good question. Uh, we are all human, but we are unique in the fact that God created us distinctly. I have never met you before. You have never met me before. But earlier, you are a Christian missionary practicing your faith out there in Brazil. And so I am right here in Ontario, Canada, but we are brothers, mm -hmm. you know? And so God creates each human being uniquely. It will, it will be one million or what time in, in a million, our DNA matches. Mm -hmm. But we are created or were created by the same creator. And so God doesn't have an issue with us having our distinct individualistic uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. Where it becomes uh, difficult is when we use that because uh, individualism is the practices of the individual is the mm -hmm. behavior, the conduct of the individual. That's where individualism comes in. But indeed, we are individual. The church is made up of many members, but we are one. 
-hmm. when it comes to serving and worshiping God. Yeah, and you're kind of pointing that individualism can both be positive and negative. Go a little bit more into that. Yes, it, it can be. Well, it's, the manifestation of it is more negative than positive. Mm -hmm. But on the positive side, as I point out a moment or two ago, we are individual. And not every individual is the same, even if we look alike. There are distinct features, distinct traits that belongs to that individual that doesn't belong to you or me or the other person. And so that's a positive side of it. And um, when we understand that, we will know that comparing one another is a cruel thing. I remember preaching some time ago back in the UK that comparison is cruel because you're not going to find two of the same people mm -hmm. do things the same way. And yeah. in the same season, you know, we're all in different in, seasons the same of life, season. different journey, you know? you know. So that is the positive on the negative side of individualism, which is the purpose of the book has to do with behavior. How we behave, how we treat one another, how we respond to one another. In, in our society today, anger, bitterness, malice, malicious behavior, ill treatment of one another, name calling, you name it. Those are spirits that are influenced by the devil and not of God. Because the spirit of God influences us to love one another. Even when we don't see eye to eye with each other. But we recognize that every human being, white, black, brown, you name it, are all God's creation. Yeah. And so the individualism is the behavior, the attitude of one another. And so the individual, there are some individuals that behave in a way that God would be pleased of. But there are millions who behave in a way that, that is self-centered, self-indulgent. And God does not get the glory out of that. Wow. You're making me think of whenever we're discussing with people, we have a choice to take those words from the enemy or the words from the Lord and to bless or to curse. You know, it's so Correct. easy to just take one little word and, and say it to somebody yes. in a yes. moment when you're feeling some type of way, but that's not from the Lord. That is not from the spirit of the Lord. Amen to That's that. crazy. That's crazy Amen to think about to it that. in that way because it's so true. Yes, and and so I, true. I would just like to add to what I've just said because take, for example, the, I mentioned the anger. Mm -hmm. I used to teach at, uh, at prisons in the UK as a chaplain and I, I used to teach inmates that anger is just one word away from danger. <laughs> if you had a D before the A, mm -hmm. instead of anger, it become danger. Wow. Does that make sense? Wow. <laughs> I never saw that before. That's crazy. Okay. So, wow. so when a person gets angry, the, the Bible said we should angry but sin not. Mm -hmm. When anger leads a person to misbehave, to don't cry the other person, to name call the other mm -hmm. person, all of that comes out of the spirit of individualism because the person wants to believe that he or she 
have something over the other person. And that's it. That's right. Because when we say something like this, Mm -hmm. we're not saying it to to bless or to help. We're saying it because we want them to feel worse than me. Exactly. You're exactly right. We're putting ourselves in a higher place. I'm better than you. Exactly. That, that's exactly the spirit of indi- individualism. Wow. Absolutely. So, you know, when we think of the killing in America, in Jamaica, the country of my birth, in Canada, wherever it is around the world, that's the spirit of individualism. I want what you have, but I don't want to work for it. Mm-hmm. And so here are some additional spirit that may not be in the book, but take scammers. It's a spirit. It's mm-hmm. a demonic spirit that human being can think of scamming people out of their life saving, out of their earnings. And so that spirit, murder, is a spirit. And that comes out of anger, bitterness, and jealousy. Cain killed his brother Abel because he was jealous of his brother. He did him nothing. But because God honored Abel's sacrifice and Mm -hmm. dishonor, Cain's sacrifice because one give the best and God knows the best. Wow. The other give but didn't give his best and secondly didn't give it from his heart. Mm-hmm. Wow. As a result of that, he slew his brother, took his brother's life. And in a part of the book, I, I mentioned the backdrop to my uncle Melvin that was murdered uh, 40 something or so years ago because of his politics. He was not a politician. He, you know, he was just an ordinary man. And somebody didn't like the party or the politics to which he supported and killed him. Wow. I went to the funeral. I was pastoring in Westmoreland in Jamaica at the time. My eldest daughter was just a baby. I think she was less than a year old. But I went to my uncle's funeral, Dallas, and preached on the subject, Cain, where is your brother Abel? When I finished that message, both parliamentarians for the parish of Trelawney was after me wanting me to become a politician. (laughs) I refuse it, turn it down because I am a preacher. I am a preacher of the gospel. Mm -hmm. And so that came up during writing the book because people talk about that message. I was I was 40 something years younger than I am now. <laughs> you know. This is not a new uh, message for you then. This is yes. not new. And so when I said it's a word for now, no matter what season, 20 years from now, I oh, this book will be a word for that time. Wow. Because human behavior will continue until the end of the age. And the question we're all waiting for, if we see this spirit in our life, which I'm going to do an assessment after this and see where I may have the spirit of individualism, how do we get rid of this spirit of individualism in our life, repent and turn away from this? Not a good question. You see, I would I would respond to that question by saying first and foremost, each individual listening to this podcast or even those that are not listening need to first make a self-examination. Take an inward look of oneself. I have a, a somebody from the uh, somebody from Reader's View wrote 
about the book and she was so moved by it that she said um, about the spirit of individualism, how this has changed her life by just reading reading the book, mm -hmm. you know, and um, she, she said that the spirit of individualism is a perfect choice for anyone curious about the, about the Christianity of the old days and its true essence. Lenley Newland provides concrete proof that individualism is incompatible with the gospel and offers practical ways for Christian to live in the community. I received this uh, reader's uh, approval or recommendation on the 10th of this month, July. And so we got to understand here that, you know, this is so powerful. Another Christian lady said this, Dallas, that is so profound. She said, <laughs> you know, and she called it an eye-opening Christian exposure. That's what she wrote. She wrote, this book was a game changer for me as a Christian who has always believed in the power of individualism. She said, I won't name her, but she said she has always believed in the power of individualism. I was skeptical about what the spirit of individualism had to offer. However, I was blown away by the author's fresh and enlightening perspective. The book challenged me to reevaluate my beliefs and rethink how I live out my faith. This is a must read for anyone seeking a deeper understanding of the Christian community. End of quote. And I leave it at that for that answer. Wow. wow. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing. What are your plans for the future of this message? Because you say it's a message for now. What are your plans moving forward from that? Thank you for that question, Dallas. My plan for the future is uh, from the time I wrote this book, it was published in January of 2021, just as COVID started spreading. And that has kept me going around promoting the book. But if I get the opportunity to go into churches, to go into schools, to go into community, to speak to politicians of all walks of life, to go into parliament and promote the spirit of individualism, it would be an opportunity that I would take with open hearts. Yeah. You know, I, I will make myself available to travel wherever providence would take me to teach and educate people on this spirit. I've had people ask me, how do I come by this title? I've had close friends, bishops, ask me, people I know, people I've never met, but by talking to me on the phone, how do I come by the title? As I said earlier, it was God-inspired, god unction, god and it is to him that I give the glory. But one of my aim for the future is to travel and speak to this book or speak on this topic wherever I'm invited to. So I'm open for yeah. some invitation <laughs> to go and share this book in greater details. I'm just giving you a synopsis view mm -hmm. at this point in time on this podcast. Yeah. But from these two ladies that I've read, 10 of them wrote on to um, Reader's View, and all 10 of them give the book five stars. 
Yeah. It blew me away. I, I was shocked. But thanks to God, when I saw it, all 10 of them give it a five-star rating. And yes. so if people are listening out there and they want to have me come to their community or church or wherever, to their parliament, yes. even, even to Congress and to the Senate, because what is going on there? It's the spirit of individualism where, you know, Democrat is against Republican, Republican is against yeah. Democrat, right against left and left against right. All these are the spirit of individualism in yeah. clear manifestation. Wow. Thank you so much for everything that you shared today. And you really opened up my eyes of the spirit of individualism because it's not just one thing. It, it brings so many other no. things behind the scenes with this yes. spirit and yes. that it is a spirit. You're, you're identifying this is a spirit that comes from the beginning of time. This is something that we've, we've been dealing with. And if we don't entertain the Lord, if we don't spend time in the presence and in intimacy and take on the fruit of the spirit and walk in holiness, we will attach the spirit to ourselves and we will walk with this, right? We will walk in this spirit of individualism. It will right. affect our relationships. It will affect our churches, our communities, our families, our so many different things. Yeah. So thank you so much for the things that you gave today. Yes. And the, can I make just one comment? before? Yes, you, please. Uh, there is a part in the book that I address some provoking thoughts where the Christian church is concerned. And uh, I won't go into it. I would like people to read it themselves. But on page 127, they can read it. And some of the questions that I ask there, you know, has to do with the selfishness that I am seeing in church. As I said, I grew up in the church. I am in my late 60s. And I started out serving the Lord from a teenager. So experience is what you live, not so much what you do. And one of the things I ask is, why should a congregation have 12 or more musicians? Mm -hmm. While another church down the road don't even have one. Yeah. Why should a congregation have 12 or so worship leaders yeah. and another one down the road struggling? Wow. That's the spirit of individualism. We need to look outward rather than inward. We wow. need to understand that the church is not a denomination. So denominational labels are not recognized by God. And so if the church is one foundation, then I believe wow. we should share what we have. God never bless us to keep all that we have, mm -hmm. but to share it. And the church today, and I mean all denominations, is not good at sharing. Yeah. And, and, wow. and that's the spirit of individualism. And uh, Somebody can challenge me on that in the future, but yeah. that's part of the spirit of individualism. This is something I've been able to experience in my ministry in Brazil. Yeah. I, I was not connected to one specific denomination. I was working independently. So I was able to go inside of many different denominations of churches in Brazil. Yeah. And some of those names, uh, I'll leave for another day. However, I was able to see the differences in each church denomination and how they functioned right. in I still right. like oh, I love that I was able to go without barriers between denominations exactly. because I know when you work with some denominations, you're not allowed to go outside yes. of that barrier. So I'm so grateful for the Lord that He's allowed me to experience this. And it opened my eyes so much to the different denominations and how each play a role. And and I like this thought that this is individualism, that we're competing. We're competing on yes. church size, even within the same yeah. denomination. We're exactly. competing. Yeah. Exactly. I, I know of people. They belong to the same international body, but they don't support the other congregation. Yeah. That cannot be God. 
Mm -hmm. You know, and what you are doing mm -hmm. down there in Brazil, Dallas, I commend you because you are carrying out the mandate of Christ and his church mm -hmm. in the Great Commission. And so I am currently working on another book that has to do with politics and the church and democracy. And Which is another I, now word, right? I, I address word. the issue of how the church denomination disunite people and community. Religion disunite people and community. But the church of Jesus Christ, whatever your label, bring people together and support one another. We need to acknowledge that the church is not united. And the spirit of individualism, competition, yeah. this one feel that I'm better than the other church down the road. We need to stop it and come together for the glory of God. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. I don't see many people that would need to challenge that because that is of the Lord, you know, that, I is, hope that is godly. That is, that is of the heart of the Lord. So thank you so I much hope. for for sharing all of those things. Where can we find your book again? Can you tell us the title one more time and then where it's available? The title of the book is The Spirit of Individualism. At the top of the book, it has a no word for these challenging times. And then there's three words below individualism that is very important. Identify it, named it, and destroy. destroy. Yes, yes. Identify the spirit. Mm. Call it what it is. Name it. And then, with God's help, destroy. And yeah. so you can go on to Amazon and purchase copy of this book. And, um, you know, I hope it challenge you and I hope Millions of people like those two persons I quoted from who read the, it's 156 page and they have read it and they have given the book a five star rating, every single one of them. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And today you have successfully identified it. And so if I can ask you to end our time together with a prayer for us to name yes. it and to destroy it, that would be yes. wonderful. And before I pray, I just want to say, Donna, thanks a million for the opportunity to come on to your podcast and talk about the book. And I look forward to future assignment to share from this book. Thank you so, so much. let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, creator of heaven and earth, the God of all human, whatever our culture, our nationality, whatever our perspective, you made us in the likeness of your own image. And Father, you did not create us to war against one another, to fight against one another to hate one another, to carry malice one for another. Oh no, Lord, you created us for your purpose and for your glory, that we would worship you in spirit and in truth. And so from this podcast to wherever people will listen, I pray that your Holy Spirit who have Oh God, inspired me to write this book that you will touch their hearts, that you will transform life, oh God, and that as they read it, as they listen to the podcast, they will reevaluate their life when it comes to the spirit of individualism, when it comes to selfishness, when it comes to jealousy, when it comes to greed, Holy Spirit of God, I pray that you will continue to use Dallas on this podcast, continue to inspire him 
as he challenged others. Oh God, down in Brazil where he's now located, God use him as a catalyst for change and that lives will be transformed. Bless this podcast now everywhere that it may be heard. And may your name be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You've just listened to the Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. With your host, Pastor Chris Busher. Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast was recorded live in studio with final editing made before uploading. Subscribe today to Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast on iTunes or Google Play. For more fantastic daily content, visit Pastor Chris Busher online via Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Don't miss the next episode on Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast.